But I would actually say I'm happy we went through that because that eventually made us stronger. Okay. You know, uh, we at the end of the day realized back to uh, Reverend Christine said it's about the two of us. Yes, it's not about what people are saying and the noise. I've never been about what society thinks. Otherwise, I would not dress how I dress, do the things that I do. Mm. You know. And you said so, you want to be you. You want to be happy. You know. Um, so. Later when like, we sat down and really talked and we agreed, like, listen, let's talk this nonsense. Mm -hmm. People say, who is saying? One time I said, bring them, show me, say this one. Yeah? Mm -hmm. I said, people, that's the whole universe. Are you saying people in New York are also talking? <laughs> yeah? uh -huh. Show me, say, let's see, let's discuss it. Say, what's up, uh huh? I, I, I can't, I can't, you know? And... Because people keep saying, no, you're so headstrong, you're so opinionated on some things, you, you stick to your guns or something. And I say, yes, I watched my mom shrink away because, and die yeah. because of what she thought society would do for her or her expectations. Was, I can't. Yeah. I can't. That's, that's literally a writing on the wall that's telling you, be strong, have your principles, believe in what you have to do, and be happy. You guys, we are not taught to be happy. Yeah. If anything, as women especially, we are taught, it's okay. To be beaten, to be miserable, to get HIV from your husband because he's, 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 he's all, he's all, over, the all place, over the place. But you cannot leave what okay people for say. for him children. While you, by mistake, maybe in your sorrows, you get pregnant with another uncle just because maybe you are being beaten every day. Mm. Oh my God, you're a prostitute. You're a what? Huh? Mm -hmm. It's like, ah. Uh, choose your happy place. And uh, Oprah once, uh, read Oprah once said, she has this... Uh, she framed something in her office, so she says, respect the kind of energy you bring into my space. Yes, yes. So you yes. come with your bad manners. <laughs> she tells you from those ends, please, nice time. Mm, bye. And something I, it's now, it's even a rule in my home. Yes. yes. You should hear the kids, my daughter say, Enzi, now you're bringing negative energy here. <laughs> Be my baby. You know, I'm like, no, it's oh, so no, important. No. It it's is. important because you take some of it yeah. in. You do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's, I'm very strong about it. I'll never compromise my happiness. Yes. Ever. Okay. Ever. How long were you apart? Mm, I would say two years. Okay. Yeah. And then you got back together. Yeah. Did you also realize at that point that, man, okay, despite all this, I'm missing in? Of course. <laughs> I'm being uh, stubborn, but because I think course. sometimes we forget that just he the bottom is line is that friend. Like, yeah. this, uh, that's a, that's what I can I, I can say about Chad. He's my best friend. Mm. Like even in when we fight about no, you know, couples. The first when I see something, I'll look up, but there's something I want to tell him. The first person I think of, I'm like, wait, did you hear this thing? Then I remember, but we quarrelled. <laughs> <laughs> I even tell him, I'm like. I was going to give you hot covers, but I'm angry with you. Then he mm. bursts out laughing, and then that's how we continue. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He's literally my best friend. Yeah. I think for me that, that the reason why, and I need to say this because the, the time we were separated was when my mom's depression had hit strong. So I was also going through my own so stuff. So you were going through, yeah. Mm -hmm. Something I struggled with all my life as a kid, people, people, people. Then you come to me with that statement. You, my safe person. <laughs> then... I yeah. don't get it. And I think, honestly, Krista, we need to talk to young couples about what marriage is, what relationship. You know, I didn't get it. So, and I was honestly, I said, I don't get it. You're going to guide me through this journey. And now you're the same one saying, I was like, yo, for me, that's what I know best, to walk away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's later on that I, and because he was my best friend, or he is my best friend, I found it easy now for him to tell him, I'm mad at you because of this, I'm mad, you know? So in the talking, even me, he's like, I'm mad at you because of, because I also messed up in so yeah. many ways, mm -hmm. 100%. So we talked, and that's why we are back, that because we talk, we were friends. Yeah. We mm -hmm. sat and were honest with each other, and we talked about it, and we said, this will never happen again because we'll always talk. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's one time I think you were doing an interview or yeah. you were sharing something mm -hmm. on stage mm -hmm. and you said that you have dealt with alcoholism on a personal level. Yeah. People are very close to me are battling alcoholism. And um, it, it, it's so heart-wrenching. Like, it literally rips you apart because you see them going and you know the next thing is death. 
and you like what, what do I need to do you know um, so but I'm so happy that there, there are very many organizations now that are you know helping them but the issue is I think when you have somebody close to you dealing with anything really um, any form of addiction depression whatever is love them just love them that's what I've learned over time mm-hmm. is love them show them you understand even though you don't mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. show them you understand and then um, just love them you know if you kick them out shout at them abuse them it, that withdraw, they withdraw more so you just need to act, you know draw them in just show them love you know and then when that a very very vulnerable uh, point then talk to them yeah. so this is how I feel you're hurting me you're mm. breaking my heart I believe you're this I believe you're that you can do this you can do that um, yeah it's, it's, it's hard I mean yeah. I know I know what you're talking yeah. about I've also had people close to me mm. who are alcoholics and yeah. do not admit that yeah. they're alcoholics and I think the part that people forget is that you're dealing with this person you know and then they become someone, somebody else somebody else yeah. it's almost like a madness yeah. and then when they are sober again they're back to their senses exactly. they cannot remember but you remember yeah. what this person has yeah. done has yeah. said yeah. oh the words they say the yo words they say yo that's painful it's that's very, very difficult very painful. yeah but there's always a way there's mm. always a and i think for us who are dealing with people who are dealing with those kind of even ourselves is the solutions are there. Mm. Now we're really in an internet age where you just Google, you know, say depression centers in Uganda or alcoholic, alcoholism centers in Uganda. There's so many. Mm. There's so many. And I have met, I know personal friends who have recovered and, you know, they, they are willing to come and talk, you know. So I think it's people like me and you who need to sensitize people and not let them know that this information is out there yeah you can actually get help yeah. out there mm-hmm. yeah and you're not alone yeah because sometimes you think that madness that no one else knows about you're not alone mm-hmm. you're not alone it's a story other each one of us have a, a dealing and struggling with something or somebody yeah yeah and we need support and we need we need to tell people the support is there mm. yeah okay so we talked about Quivuga yeah. and how a group of you got together and you're like, okay, this is how I deal with my thoughts and my feelings. Yeah. And let's start. And yeah. you said by the third event, you now had a venue yeah. and it was growing. And then after a while it ended, it died. Why? So what happened? <laughs> so, um, earlier on, um, we were talking about uh, how you partner with you know companies and they have expectations of you i would say at that time we were being sponsored by heineken Mm -hmm. and i was working with the kinetic it was run by cedric babu yes and uh i think the expectations were a bit high yeah so i would would say point number one point number two it, it really grew so big that i i i was i was like okay what's happening over here i i i needed to take control because I felt like it was going, so the event was changing into was something changing else. Was changing to something, it's morphing into something else, and I'm like, no, 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 cut, 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 cut. <laughs> this is not. I never has buried. <laughs> never has buried it. <laughs> okay. So, um, yeah, and I, I, it was a bold decision I had to make. Uh, people are like, no, no, no. People are going to say this <laughs> again. <laughs> People, wow, what a wow. People are going to say. <laughs> yeah. I know that, that never that goes away. away huh? yeah. I was like, listen, mm. I don't understand where I'm at with this situation. Uh, I, I can't. So I called Cedric. I said, listen, uh, I think we need to stop this. And Did something think. happen? It was, it was just, I, I just feel like, you know, Cedric's a businessman, yes. which is a good thing. Yes. And he always used to tell me, no, let's, let's make money. It's about, and I said, okay, I do understand that, but we're killing the creativity, the artsy, poetic. Huh? I wanted like a different ambience from the lights, camera, action. You know, I wanted candles, lights, stage. I want this. So we're clashing in that regard. And in a way, it was becoming like so many other yeah. events. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
And he's just like, no. And he understood. He really did. And even said, um, you sure you want to, to shut this down? I said, yeah, and we'll come back, come back different. And besides, Heineken, our sponsor, was also leaving. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, so uh, I stopped it 2013, brought it back 2014 at Legends, mm -hmm. did it for three months. But again, I didn't have any kind of sponsorship, so it was hard for me to run it. Okay. Um, yeah, and I sat back mm -hmm. and I said, God, please show me the way. Show me when I should do this again. So, so you let it go for a few years? Uh, yeah, six years. Because you just launched again last year. Yeah, March. Mm -hmm. Rebirth. This year, it. yeah, this year is, I mean, this March is uh, going to be one year anniversary. Ah, okay. Yeah. So I just woke up one day and I said, no, no. I did a, uh, I, I would call it a, a small little mentorship entrepreneur curse. <laughs> Uh -huh. with an amazing lady called Remy Male. Okay. I don't know if you know Remy. Mm -hmm. So, um, and there I learned the key thing that hit me that, that, uh, that time was social capital. I called Angie Pink Coconut, I called I don't know who, I called Daudi Kalunji Venue, I called just like that. And you were back? Okay. And, and how has it been? As a speaker, I have Castle Light as a sponsor, I have Coca-Cola, mm -hmm. so yay. Mm -hmm. So it's about, but again, it comes from a place of growth. Yes. Um, and is it the event that you 100%. wanted it to be? 100%. It has continued to be that event? Yes. Beautiful, it's 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 lovely. It's oh my god, it's such a beautiful experience. And when people come, even for the first time, they're always like, I just heard about it, but yo, I'm mm -hmm. definitely coming. It's like, it's like, it's not there isn't any other event like this in Kampala, okay. and I'm like, yes, that's okay. what I wanted. Yeah. you know, the music is near soul, acoustic, you know, I make sure there's art. It's just beautiful. Mm -hmm. I'm happy, it's like my car, so it's and a I'm creative a space for expression yes. and. Okay. Yeah. All right. So you're happy with I'm that? I'm very, very, very happy. Okay. Now you were talking about your jewelry and your designs and how sometimes it's so hard for you to let go. <laughs> but you display your work. I like I try in different I, stores, yes. don't you? So I think uh, by the time you hand it over to the store, you have to let go. Now, no, no. The last time I displayed was at Bold. Yes. And I, I stopped to display. Oh, why? No, honestly, it was it was. Um, business ethics, I would say, because on, um, I would, I, in my mind, as like I take stuff there, it sells. They give you a percentage, which is good, yeah. very fair. And then I use the same money to go buy materials and take back. Yeah, so they give you the money after a month. My stuff would run out after a week. Oh, but you'd still have to wait for like a whole month. Thanks. Uh huh. So, okay. yeah, I had to re-strategize. Okay. Yeah, because that means now I have to take more stock back, you know, yes. more stock. Yes. And I'm like, I don't have the money. Mm -hmm. Remember, I was not working at the time. Just now, I was like, okay, this is a struggle for me. Mm -hmm. So I had a conversation with them, my my friends for life. And I said, listen, let me rebrand myself. Okay. Give me time. Mm -hmm. I'm going to come back with the bank. Okay. Yeah. All right. When I'm organized, because now I know things run. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Have you looked at having your own space to display? I did have designs? my own space. Okay. Uh, outside of bold yeah mm -hmm. um 2015 yeah uh beautiful store i even went over to china and bought stuff now this is stuff we don't know and and we should know when you say you have capital for a business that's what i learned in my experience yes the capital is something that should run run you for at least two years yeah two years i i, I didn't know that oh, so you started and it was just enough for a few months mm -hmm. so yeah, died out. Uh, but I, I, I don't even let it break me. I was just like, okay, I learned from that. Exactly. Mm -hmm. and so I know what to do next time. And so I think for me, in everything that I've learned in my life's journey, in regards to business, is I am, that's not my strength. Mm. Me, I'm a creative. Yes. So I need like a business manager. Mm -hmm. 
who's now my husband. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now him, he understands that stuff. So I said, don't tell me, just tell me on this and this day, you need eggs from the like Kivuga. I'm like, yeah. guys, don't ask me about the poets or the, or the dramas who are coming. Just make sure we have money to give them. Mm -hmm. Yeah? yeah, just make sure we have money for lights and whatever. I'm not even going to ask you again the money from. Okay. Nice time. Right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we have our structure. So that's what I've learned over time. Uh -huh. So for me, in regards to business, zero. Okay. Creativity, 100%. You'll go in that. Yeah. And Tell me no, I think no. that's even where, as a stylist, you also have a strength. Because yes. you talked about your social capital yeah. and working with different people. Yeah. I know you work with Anne Kansime yeah. a lot. <laughs> Uh, a lot of her Afrocentric looks. Um, I know she's your your tights as well. <laughs> My girl for life. Mm -hmm. So so that means like what has been your style for the longest time? You are now able to translate because one of the yeah. challenges is people can yeah. do it for themselves, yes. but they can't do it for, for others. Yes. Yes. yes, yes, yeah. But I think even the people who come to me for that advice really want that. Yeah. They want transition into that. Or oh, it's it has always been inside, you know? Mm -hmm. And now they are at the point of like, you know what? This is who I am. I want my natural hair, I want my big earrings, I want you know. So and that's as funny enough as I had a conversation with my husband on our way here. I said I not everybody wants style tips from me. Mm -hmm. It's something I had to learn the, the hard way. Because uh -huh. me I'm Kajanja. <laughs> I'm like, ah, and now we now do the hair like this instead of like, and I come from such a good place. But then I realize, no, no, no. <laughs> Let them come to you, ah. you know. So because I, I, and I keep telling for this. Yes, I'm authentic, but then I can also uh, give you advice in different styles, mm -hmm, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I said, okay, start by doing it for yourself. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And and. Truth be told, people woke up to me and say, no, no, can you style me? No, no, can you? Even for me to get into the styling things, because people came to me. Mm -hmm. Me, I never thought of myself as a stylist. So, and I always tell them, listen, they're like, but no, no, I fear your things. <laughs> <laughs> they're big, they're small. <laughs> I'm like, no. I'm like, I know you, I see you. Yes. Like your polka dots, you like your pearl earrings. And everybody see, stop wearing black and white the whole time. Add a bit of color. So get like a takeaway skirt and mm. match your polka dot shirt and a blazer mm. and like a dot of yellow earrings. Oh, a little bit of color. That's nice. I like that. Okay. You see? Uh -huh. I know you're a lawyer supposed to wear suits, dark colors and whatever. Just have a pop of color with a nice cut pink necklace. Mm -hmm. Something simple. They're like, eh, hey, I never thought of it like that. You know? Okay. Have good nice pumps, red mm. pumps. Yeah. You know, a cute bag. Like, they're like, oh, okay. You know? so not everything has to be bright, bright and bold. Okay. Yeah. I remember many years ago us laughing about the fact that you said you had OCD. Which is probably what she's talking about when you're always touching people's hair. And <laughs> I, I once saw the chick at ShopRite. How wig? Do you know that the hair here, right? Yeah. No more hair, then this is wi wig. Mm -hmm. Weave? Weave. Weave. It Sorry. was a weave under weave. the hair. Uh -huh. Weave, then this is her hair. Yes. Now, the hair was standing like this. <laughs> Then the weave is arranged here, wouldn't you? Mm -hmm. I could not. I you couldn't leave her? I couldn't. I followed her. I said, excuse me, ma'am. Hi. <laughs> you don't know me? I don't know you. But your hair <laughs> <laughs> needs some little Jesus. <laughs> Lero. Oh, my God. I was itching. So she said, oh, thanks. So she just put it down. I said, no, 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 no. Let's go to the bathroom. Yeah. We wet it. A little, little, then it fell properly down. I'm like, now you look no more. <sighs> mm -mm. Okay. Oh, you see a lady walking and her bra is out mm -hmm. at the back? Mm -hmm. uh -uh. Now yeah. fellow women help each other. Yes. I'm like, Stop Madame, Stop someone and just be like, you oh. just go here and <laughs> let it go down. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Women, Bambi, we should help each other, mm. really. Yeah. So okay. if that's OCD, I'm sorry. <laughs> but trust me, I've been praying about it because mm. you can run mad. You can like, oh my, why isn't this? You can't even say focus on what you're doing because like you're looking at. Mm -hmm. Like, why isn't? My God, I went to a restaurant there some time back and I told them, your paintings are sad. Yes. Then I told the guy, come and see. So he looked and said, I said, look, the woman is drowning. The way her bicycle has fallen over here. Like, why would you put such a picture in, in the restaurant? Mm. I said it, it evokes, yes, you know, sad it translates feelings. into the mood of the place. Yeah, uh -huh. I said, that makes a lot, and I said they are black and white, which is worse. <laughs> I just if they had color, <laughs> that guy laughed. <laughs> They've never changed them because I think that's the kind of 
maybe that's what the emotion kind of they want to bring out or uh-huh. evoke, I don't know. So yeah. But yeah. So I've, you find that you've always been the kind to speak your mind. Yes. Mm-hmm. And it's put me in trouble so many times. But it's not like I'm lying. So I'm always like, okay. And you're coming from a good place. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But now I've learned over time to shut up. Mm. And keep quiet. Unless it's affecting somebody directly or affecting me directly. Mm. Now they are Oh, me, I'm a warrior. I fight. I fight for women in the parking lot when the man has pushed her and those ones. Mm-hmm. I was once in a hospital and sitting across this couple and the guy kept shouting at this girl. All right. He kept shouting at her and she said, listen, I can't believe you're shouting at me, yet I'm here for, high, for blood, high blood pressure. You get, like, a young girl. I was like, even that baby, I don't think is mine. And he said so many things. Just know we had their secrets. Eh? Mm. So, um, <laughs> I remember telling my son, Hold me. <laughs> I said, because I'm going to fly over there. <laughs> Sweet! <laughs> so I jump on that guy. <laughs> so he literally held me. I said, now so why hold me? Go and do something. <laughs> Go and help me. I said, honey, I can't breathe. Take me out. Like, I had to walk out. Mm. Yeah. So I think like, there are certain situations, like, I can't, I can't see people suffering. Mm-hmm. Now there, I'm sorry. Yeah. Let me, I went to MLA anytime. Yeah. No, but I mean, it's part of the whole, you know, it's none of your business. Don't interfere with the other way. But sometimes, sometimes sometimes you need to step up. Honestly, yeah. I know there are times where you can't go in, like you'll be beaten or cut or shot or something. But where you really can help, please step out and help. Mm -hmm. That's what I believe. Okay. So you've had this dance with society (laughs) and expectations and what the right thing is to do and you just being uniquely you. Yeah. And a lot of people struggle with that. Yeah. Young men, young women, yeah. eh, eh, finding yeah. that balance. Yeah. What would you advise as we wrap up? I honestly feel that, especially if you're now grown up, because so many times we do things to impress our parents, even the careers that we choose, the people that we marry. Mm. Um, so I feel like if you're old enough, and by old enough I would say you're working, you have your kadaim, you're living in your own place, or you could be still, I don't know, you're at a point where you can take care of yourself. Mm. That's a huge hint that you're old enough to make decisions, your own decisions, yeah? Your own life choices. Mm. So, it's it's sad when when you you want to do something, but your parents are looking at you like, mm-hmm, so where are you going to get the money from us? Or you but if you're in a position whereby you can take care of yourself, you can make your own decisions. I think ideally you taking care of yourself is step number one yes, of making yes, that yes, decision. Yes, yes, yes. So as long as it's not hurting anybody, really. You know there are some people who whose rebellious spirits take them to another place now, which is harmful. Now that's wrong. This is people mistake make, uh, making your own life choices. Is this Focus on it making you happy. Are you happy? So many of us are told, do this, do that, do that, and we're not told to be happy. So, number one, are you able to take care of yourself? To support that life choice that you've made. Mm -hmm. Number two, which should be number one, please be happy. Choose your happy place, your happy place. Mm -hmm. No one has to understand your happy place. Nobody, just you. Because at the end of the day, it's you and God alone. Yeah? So you're going to do stuff to please people. You're going to do stuff to... Mm-hmm. Now when you run mad. <laughs> now when you're swallowed up by drugs or alcohol or whatever. Mm. Guess what? Everyone is going to say, you see? The same people who are trying to make these decisions for you. So mm. choose a happy place. Always choose to strive to be happy. Yeah. That's really my mantra. Okay. Yeah. Do things that that sit well with you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, thank you so much for coming on this show. (laughs) It's nice to catch up. Very nice to catch up, sweetie. Mm -hmm. Thank you for everything that you're doing. We love you. (laughs) For people to hear our stories, thank you. It means a lot, Angie. I love you. I love you.